to have a deal that they're comfortable with. You know, shouldn't be rushed into a deal, shouldn't be pressured into a deal, um, and all that. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, there's not really there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. If you know, Crawford is running his own show nowadays, and if there are certain things that he wants, no matter how unusual or unprecedented or uh, non-customary they are, and he's taking the position, these are things I'm going to get in order to you know, be comfortable going into business uh, on this event. Well, you know, that, that's his choice. And it, you know, it, it sucks. I'm having this conversation within my own household, you know, and, you know, you know, my girl upset at me for the same thing. She's like, isn't there something, you know, everybody can do the power brokers to make sure people take the deals that they're supposed to take. And it doesn't. Um, and look, look, that's in some sense, that's how UFC operates, you know, for good or bad. There's a lot of downsides to, to sort of being able to force people into deals effectively by freezing them out on other stuff. I wouldn't want that structure either. Um, and if you're going to give people some autonomy and freedom, then occasionally, you know, you're going to get some blown deals because people, you know, have the right to ask for what they want to ask for. Go ahead, Ty. Uh, what's going on, Mr. Mr. Espinosa? I'm, uh, my name is Ty from Philly. Listen, uh, I know you be on these spaces. I've I, I got one thing to say to you, man. We hyped up. And we, uh, if you can, you get boosted hometown fight. We're going to come out. We're ready for this kid. we ready. we behind this kid. We love him. And like, yeah, you ready. So I, 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 yeah, that, that is look, you, you know, that, that's going to be a big priority. I, th I think 2023 is a big year for boots, you know, really do. And Put, putting them in Philly um, is a priority. I, I, I know it's a priority for him. I know it's a priority for him. So I, I can't promise because look, if we able to get him a title shot, you know, no, no title shot is going to go into the challengers hometown. So I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'd rather see him get a title shot. You know, even if it's not in Philly, then then just fight in Philly without getting the title shot. Uh, but he he definitely wants it. So it uh, I think it will happen relatively soon within the next few fights. You know, I, I think in the meantime, though, the number one thing is positioning him as quickly as possible for the best title shot that he can get. Steven, the and next hold question on, real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick, real quick. Hold on, it's related. It's related. It's hold, related. On. hold on, MVO. Hold on, MVO. Ty, go ahead, Ty. Look, I, I, what I wanted to say is, I got to tell everybody in the spaces, we all boxing guys. And, you know, the city of Philadelphia is always something with the boxes. I don't like that, I don't like that. But this kid is new. This, this kid is loved everywhere. And I think I think we're ready to come out for this kid. I mean, he's a good kid. He Like, we all see him running run around the city. Like, he, he, he we think he the one. I, I think we're we ready to come out to, and, and support him. So, whatever you can do, we're we, we ready. You see our Eagles, our Philly, we're ready. We're we ready, man. Does Philly have the financial wherewithal to support a uh, Boots and his fight at this point in his career? Like, will they come out to buy tickets? Uh, in the opinion of the people that make the fights, I mean, you know, up until Javante went to Atlanta, everybody had an opinion about that market. And about that about what they wrong, right? And so, I, 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 you know, and I'll I think this. it's to be determined. I'll say this, and for everybody listening, you know, we all just went out to Brooklyn. Last week, twenty what twenty of us? I I will be on my little what two and a half hour, three hour train to Philadelphia if they put a fight there, and I'm sure some of, some of the other people in this chat will too. So, you know, if it happens, we gonna support it. And for those that's listening at the bottom, I'm glad we got it. We got about two hundred and ten people here. Please, thank you guys. Welcome to Chicken Talk. Lefty Lazy is the host, and we do support boxes financially in here. So it knows a lot of people, a lot of got YouTube channels, a lot of people talk. But here in Chicken Talk, we put our money behind these fighters and these events. And that's why we're so passionate about what's going on. Exactly. We had a whole event planned around uh, Spence and Crawford for the Chicken Talk family and the Chicken Talk friends. We had a whole event planned around there. But uh, go ahead, Lex. Steven, you mentioned in a previous uh, YouTube interview that uh, Crawford working with Kinahan could be a potential stumbling block. block. You know, I I'm sure there are certain things you can and cannot say, but could you give us some details about the vetting process for, you know, making sure Crawford wasn't aligned with Kinahan? Well, look, you know, I, I, I won't say anything specific to him 
um, because, like I said, I want to put any business out there, but I can answer the, the question generally. You know, there, there's only so much you can do, you know, and, and at, at the end of the day, you know, you, you make all the, the diligent you know, inquiries, like you're not going to hire a private investigator and go track him down and go through bank robbery or bank records. Um, but you, you, you do your due diligence, you ask the question directly, you get the assurances, and then you, at a certain point, you got to take the man's word for it. Yeah, exactly. And I also asked Blue Blood, he said there's no affiliation whatsoever with, with, with Kinahan. This Kinahan creature is becoming like the Al Heyman creature to a lot of y'all. I mean, y'all, <laughs> y'all got to drop it. But go ahead, uh, uh, Two Slit. I mean, Broadway. Well, look, uh, let, me, let, me, let me make one, one comment about, uh, about all y'all. And, and, and one of the big reasons I support y'all is exactly what you just pointed out. I mean, there are a lot of people who, uh, who, who sort of, who are, very enthusiastic about the sport, spend a lot of time around the sport, but you guys, um, as frustrated as you get sometimes, and, and that's understandable, um, you guys keep it positive, you know, and continue supporting the sport and the fighters. I think there's a lot of cynicism and negativity, um, especially at times like these, but I know you guys support the fighters, have love for the sport, and that's one of the reasons I like supporting y'all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Go ahead, Broadway. Uh, how's it going, Mr. Espinosa? We had spoken before. We spoke on uh, uh, when, right before Raya was going to fight De Los Santos. I had told you that De Los Santos was going to knock him out. <laughs> I, I just want to know, one, you know, just, you know, I, I, as you can see, I have a good eye for talent. And two, when, when can we see that guy back, man? That dude was exciting. Uh, I'm the voice of Dominican boxing. I'm not sure if you remember when I spoke to you. Of course, of course. So, a lot of people been hitting me up, asking me when we're going to see him, who's he going to fight. And I, I got the man of the hour right here on the space with me. So, I need to know, when can I see De Los Santos again? Well, you know, that's that's part of, that's what's going on in the next couple of weeks, is starting to, you know, lay out, or continue to lay out the first quarter, the first couple quarters of next year. And um, he's definitely someone who, who, you know, deserves to be seen again, and you know, with that kind of performance, we we will see him. So I, I don't have him on the schedule yet, but I can tell you that he is a priority. You you, you sort of burst on the scene like something like that. You know, you, he's got everybody's attention, and and he'll he'll make a quick return. Uh, uh, I, I, I let me just throw in the suggestion. You know, Pitbull Cruz. I see he don't got a fight schedule. I'm just saying. I just think that's a nice fight. So if you were wondering what my opinion was. You know, Pitbull Cruz and him seem to like that. To me, that's an exciting fight. I, that's all I'll say. And thank you so much for answering my question and giving us your time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great style matchup. The voice it, of it, Dominican it, boxing has spoken. I don't know why I thought she <laughs> was going to ask a Bud, Bud Spence question. I just, I just. <laughs> hey, that's es- 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 <laughs> so real. He's so, he's so cool. Like he want to say something. Y'all know what he want to say, but he keep capping himself like. I, but I don't want to, you know, ruffle your feathers. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to make headlines, you know. I I'm got just you, trying I got to chop it up with that, you guys. That's that shit you learned in L.A. when you, when you went to school out there. Hey, Steven, yeah. this this space is not being recorded, so, you know. Okay. All right, no, I appreciate I appreciate that, and that's why, yeah. I, you know, I'm Go a little bit. It. But it, it, it's not really my style to, like, you know, shit on yeah. people anyway. Go for it, Go for it, Hey, thanks again, Stephen. Um, so I was going to ask two quick questions. One, who do you think is most likely for Earl next if uh, this blood thing isn't happening, which obviously is, it seems like it's not going to be. And two, is the ergashev Matias fight uh, going to be on PBC? Is that confirmed or is that kind of still up in the air? Um, I, um, I'll i take the second one first. Um, I had heard that fight discussed. I have not heard that it was actually done, but that doesn't mean that, that it, it's not. You know, I, I don't, I don't always follow that stuff. A lot of times, PBC will come having done, you know, a half dozen fights, and we'll say, okay, you know, here are six fights that we can make or are made, and you know, which of the ones do you like best, and where do you think they should go? So, it, you know, that's a that's a good matchup. We've, you know, certainly had Ergashev on before, and uh, I, I I like that matchup. Yeah, I think it's a really good opening fight. Right. And then what was, he, what was the other one? What was the first question? Oh, 
Oh, just about who was most likely to be Errol's next opponent since this blood fight seems to be That's, sort of you, on the back you know, burner now. Look, I, I I won't be able to break any news. The, the, the reality is um, everybody was really single-mindedly focused on, on this fight. You know, and it's sort of the same for Tank and Ryan. There isn't a lot of thought. There isn't a lot of planning being done for a plan B, plan C. So, look, there's the obvious ones, the names that keep getting thrown out there. Um, I think, you know, those are it. I think, uh, you know, Errol's going to want a meaningful fight. You know, he's at the point in his career, and he said it, and he come, coming out of the car accident. He's not in the mood for any tune-up fights. So, so, I, so, so I think so he's going to get somebody as high level as he possibly can as soon as he can. Okay, so so let's Thanks change so much. Ta- let's change pace here a little bit because you mentioned Wait. another fight that everybody's interested. in. Well, one more question. Tank, 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 hold on, no, hold on, clever. Tank and Ryan. Let's let's move to more positive conversation. So, you know, one one big issue that everybody's curious about. We hear everybody's. It sounds like everybody's on the same page about this fight, right? But the one thing we haven't heard discussed or talked about is the network. Is it a situation where, where, where you know? Yeah, and, we, yeah, and, I, and is, I'll get straight to the, the table. Point. Is the zone at the Ray, table let me jump here? in. Oh. I, I want to get straight to the point because you know I'm a litigator, Stephen. So this type of stuff fascinates me. Mm-hmm. This 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 business about the the contract and its exclusivity, right? Um, is this something that that that's come up? And you know, I, maybe you could give us your impression of you know sort of. Ryan Garcia's relationships, as as they've been explained to you, uh, but I find I find that piece of it very fascinating because it, it, it's hard to believe that this fight can happen, uh, you know, if there is some sort of exclusivity, quote unquote, with respect to where Garcia can fight. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I'm I've got this all secondhand, and you know, certainly, you know, I don't know all that much more than. You know, than a lot of you, but my understanding, he's got you know, he signed a deal with Golden Boy. Golden Boy signed an exclusive deal with the Um, you know, as opposed to you know, having a multi fight deal directly with the platform or the network, you know, and to some people, that's a meaningful difference, to others, it's not, you know, whether it's a meaningful difference, you know, legally. Um, look, I'm sure you could ask five lawyers and get five five different opinions, but you know. My understanding, uh, again, is that Ryan never signed anything that says I will be exclusive to the zone. He doesn't have a D- the zone deal. He has a Golden Boy deal, and Golden Boy did an exclusive deal. Now, whether that has an impact or not, or has any practical effect, you know, that's debatable. Okay. All right, James, go ahead. Get your question in, James. R M B L R I L A, James. Get your hand up. Yeah, hey, 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 how you doing, Stephen Espinosa, man? Good, brother. I appreciate you um, coming in today and, and giving us your time. I just had a question for you. Um, could you clarify, if you can, like, is it anybody's fault between Earl and, and Terrence? Or is it in the middle? Like, is it Terrence's fault, more Terrence's fault, more Earl's fault? Or is it just in the middle of the in the business of things? Um. He doesn't want to make headlines. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know. Yeah, well, look, let me, let me, let me. Tell you, I definitely have an opinion on it. But no, excuse me. No, uh, before, I, before, before you go on, the reason why I did that is because I see a couple YouTubers on here, and I know that they after this they gonna go on a platform. Oh, it's 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 Terrence Fox. He's Stephen Espinosa said it, and so I, I'm trying to yeah. you know, eliminate that right now. That that yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid, you know, as well. Um, but I'll I'll say this, you know. I I don't know how Errol's at fault. Errol, you know, Errol had his deal closed. He's ready to fight. He's, you know, been in camp, you know, been, you know, committed for a while to this. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's common knowledge. You know, it's, you know, Crawford wasn't at the point where he was ready to close his deal. Um, I think we, we, we thought it was done a while back. But then didn't hear anything, and then next thing you know, he announced this. So, I, you know, again, I, I, I've seen what a lot of people have written about. You know, there's this thing was missing for the contractor; he needed this. And none, none of that has any correlation with my understanding 
of what was going on, nor was what I saw in contracts. You know, so, you know, take that w w what you will. But I'm, I'm never going to criticize and say, look, you have to take this deal. You should have taken this deal at the end of the day. That's part of being your own boss. But it, it's clear there's there's one guy who's still at the table and there's one guy who's not. OK. Um, OK. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Anybody else want to speak, send a request. Right. Hey, Steven, no, thank no, you so no, much no, for no. your time. Um, I wanted to ask you, so obviously Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia is a fight that a lot of us are very excited about. You know, besides the Crawford and, and Spence fight, you know, that's another fight that we would love to see. Um, any concerns that we can, you know, the situation that we saw with Jaime Munguia and, and Charlo negotiations, any concerns that that could happen again just because, you know, we, we kind of saw what happened with 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 those negotiations, you know, it, it's like you thought you had a done deal, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, it's not happening. Yeah, I mean, look, um, I I I am concerned. I, I do have concerns about that um, because you know that's that's really the obstacle, and you know, and once in a while, um, you know, I, th I think you know people got to step aside on things. You know, we've done it in the past. There've been plenty of situations where, you know. Um, I'm not saying it, it, it's easy, but I've had conversations with fire. They said, they said, look, I have a career defining opportunity, and, but unfortunately it's not going to be with your network. You know, uh, that was, that was the situation on Wilder Fury too. You know, and I'm not going to jump up and down and, you know, be upset about it. No, like, okay. Like that was going in a different direction. So, Okay. Like that, that happens. I mean, we've seen top rank, let some fighters go over to the zone. We've seen, you know, vice versa. And so at the end of the day, uh, I would hate to see, you know, these kind of, you know, these kind of obstacles get in the way of Ryan Garcia getting a career high payday, you know, because I think that's one, that's a tough part of it is, okay, if the zone's going to stand in the way of that fight. Then, you know, they're probably going to offer him a fight that's probably going to make him, you know, one quarter, one one fifth of what he would make, you know, in a tank fight. And I think that's a real shame for him to be deprived of a contractual uh, opportunity, a lucrative opportunity and a career defining opportunity. So I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that that is what will happen, but you know, that, that, that's the fear. Okay. All right, Claire, go ahead, Claire. Yes, Mr. Smooth. Thank you again. Um, yeah, I have this thing where I, I, I keep telling people like this analogy of just, uh, hey, man, people walk away from deals and money all the time. So with that being said, because you've kind of answered a few questions, I'm kind of piggy banking right here. Um, what what can no, I don't want to say what consists. What what makes such a deal like this, like a negotiating like how, how do we would uh, how will we figure out who gets what? Like you know, I, I'm sure you've heard there's an A side, B side. What 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 makes that up? Is it the drawability? Is it your numbers? Is it, is it the data? Because I'm sure you have these type of tools and bandwidth at your uh, disclosure there. So how's that made up? Look, um, you know, there's look, everybody's got um, you know, their own their own feeling. It's, it's sort of like you know, you, you say numbers don't lie, but you can certainly use numbers to lie a lot of different ways. Because, you know, there are some numbers that will show, um, you know, that, that Errol, you know, has a, you know, has a track record of doing much bigger events than, than does Crawford. You know, um, does, does that mean, you know, it's got to be one side of his way all the way across? Not necessarily, but, you know, you can chop up the numbers in a hundred different ways and come up with, you know, very different results. So I think you start with the numbers, but at the end of the day, you know, the negotiation is you can make the most convincing case in the world and everybody in the world can be on your side, except for the one guy who has got to accept the deal, you know, and if, if that guy doesn't like the deal for whatever reason, then, okay, then he's not going to take it. So look, there, there, there have been in situations where, you know, we gave a much more favorable split than probably we should have to get a fight done. Um, some of our biggest fights, you know, probably had to, overpay a little bit beyond what I I would have said objectively was fair as a split between the two fighters. But 
you know, it, it's not, it, you know, there's no court that you can go into. It's not like baseball arbitration where everybody puts their deal on the table and the arbitrator picks one and says, this is what the deal that's going to apply. You know, at the end of the day, there's, there's no consolation in being right, but having no deal. Like that, that's, that's a, that's a poor consolation to be able to say, look, I, I didn't, you know, wasn't able to close the deal, but I was right on everything. Like, who cares at this point? Exactly. All right, Jose, Beautiful. since you say, Beautiful. since you wait, clever, Jose, you say you never get to talk on chicken talk. Here's your big opportunity. <laughs> since you made a big stink about it a couple weeks ago. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lefty. Uh, Steven, do you think there's a chance we could see um, Keith Thurman versus Arrow? Thanks. Look, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of history there. Um, there and you know I, I know there's some there's some hard feelings errol's been pretty open um you know at the end of the day you know uh i'm not discounting what errol said and errol has said you know over time he's not that excited not that interested in fighting him um but you know at the end of the day you know we can all point to probably a dozen different examples of a fighter who said i'm never going to fight that guy and then you know turns out that they will under certain circumstances so I don't think anything's out, out of the question. Uh, I'm not doubting what Errol says, but we find ourselves in a, a situation, and I think look, he's one of the best, uh, best opponents available right now. So why, why not? You know, why wouldn't you sort of uh, you know, give him at least some consideration? So I, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. Um, I think there's uphill, and we know what Errol, how Errol feels about him, but... I still think it's an attractive fight, and simply on that basis, then it'll likely be considered. Okay, Marcy, what's good, man? What's happening, lads? What's happening, Steve? Steve, and all I wanted to ask about this stepping away from all the Spence and Crawford stuff is: uh, how likely are you to pursue um, a new way once he becomes like a? Because I'm sure he's only got one fight left on his top rank deal for you for a US fight. I was just wondering. Would you be pursuing him? Yeah, I, 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 I think so. Look, there's, a, um, you know, all those weight classes, uh, you know, have been really active over the last two or three years, um, and there's going to be some movement between them. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. You know, if he's, you know, willing to do some big fights and you know and do them here in the U.S., then he would he would fit right in. I mean, I, I don't personally, I, I don't see a lot of value in signing a guy who's never going to fight in the u.s so if he's open to fighting at least occasionally in the u.s and is open to the matchups that we might be able to offer then absolutely makes a lot of sense do, do you find it easier to make fights with certain weight classes than others is mate thank you very much cheers yeah sure no problem um certain weight classes yeah like you, you know it's an interesting point divisions, you know the not yeah I, it, it it it's interesting, you know. If you look at it, there are certain weight divisions um, that that seem to have a propensity to, you know, to to do more of the top tier match matchups than others. Um, I think, unfortunately, it's because the financial opportunities are probably more limited. You know, because if you look at some of the smaller weight classes, there's not a whole lot of money in anything other than the top tier fights, and I think that's what. That's why those fights get. It seems like in some of those classes, you're you're seeing top guys against top guys a little bit more often. You know, probably because those are the only lucrative fights to do in that division. Yeah, that's true. I, that's I think true. that's a roll of it. All right, Marlo, we are gonna let you squeeze your question in real quick. All right, thanks, Chicken Talk, for letting me talk. Yeah, but shout out uh, to uh, Steven Espinosa for talking to the people. Man, it's real solid of you. I thought, but my only question is. I always see these little rumors running around, like in the comments and things like that. People are saying that Showtime going broke or Steven <laughs> Espinosa don't have the money. It's like they be hating on y'all. Like, what is it? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kidding. Uh, I, 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 how, how do I say that? I, I've, I've got my own theories uh, on, on, on why, uh, some people are held to different standards than others, um, and, and I think um, I, I think probably all of you guys know what I'm saying without actually saying it. Um, but I think there are things other than you know just 
purely, you know, the fights that are being made and, and deals that are doing that go into whether people are critical or supportive of certain personalities or certain people or certain networks or promoters. Um, but yeah, at, at the end of the day, look, I, I just got to try and, and, and do, do what's right. Um, it is frustrating because I think a lot of the times um, people don't understand why certain deals uh, don't get made or, or why certain fighters aren't fighting. There's sometimes like there's legal situations behind the scenes where fighters said, look, I need a few months off, you know, and they certainly don't want me or anyone else saying, hey, you know, out there, like this fighter is not coming back for the next six months because he's got to clear up a, a legal situation. Right. So there, there's a there's a lot of reasons that you know, don't get out there and really shouldn't be for public uh, discussion, you know, anyway. Um, so there, there's always that that's frustrating. I, I wish I could explain to people because I know it would help a lot with their frustration and their disappointment with the sport. Um, but there, there's a, there's a lot of factors that that go into what deals can get made, um, get made when. Okay, I understand. Uh, so I just want you to know, some of us can see through the smoke in the mirrors. We know the bullshit from, you know, and we listen to guys like you and the main important people talking. We just bite, I bite off of that and when I make my videos or content or whatever. But other than that, man, appreciate Chicken Talk for letting me speak, man. Shout out to y'all doing y'all thing. Thanks, Stephen Espino, for talking to the people. That's all I got, y'all. I'm back in the listening. Okay. No, no problem, no problem. Well, um, look, 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 I'm, I'm happy to stay on, but again, like I, I never, I, I don't want to turn this into a Q and a session. You guys have a lot of good discussions it's, and I don't want to interrupt it. Well, yeah, let's, let's get back to talking then gentlemen. So, yeah. so, 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 I mean, what are people selling out there, man? I mean, we didn't had 